Radical. Welcome to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. Each week, join the gnarly Travis and Josiah as they provide insight into the print on demand industry and equip you with the totally tubular tools, advice, and strategies you need to achieve success and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Now, on to this week's totally tubular show. everybody welcome back to the print on demand cast and if you can't tell by the title of the show we are interrupting your regularly scheduled programming in the series that is print on demand cast 101 because we have a guest and uh, it's a little impromptu but you know that's how things happen here sometimes is just organically go with the flow and totally not making it up as we go all right so (laughs) uh that is in store for today's episode but before we get there travis how is your thursday going we're recording this on a thursday Mm -hmm. uh how's things been going and why uh are you frustrated with uh oh i was going to start off with the positive news um, and oh yeah let's go avalanche yes avalanche one last night start with that avalanche one in overtime game one of the final series Mm -hmm. which i think was what 73 percent of the time the person the team that clinches game one goes on to win the cup yeah which is a great important game so um, we have a, a birthday party, a birthday dinner, like a family dinner for Madeline Saturday night. And so I had to make sure that the restaurant we we're going to has TVs. And she's not <laughs> too thrilled about that. But uh, it was a non-negotiable on behalf of myself, her father and her uncles. So right. it's like, kind of like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, the next games are uh, Monday and Wednesday of next week. So we'll probably be uh, gathering for those because it's, it's a big deal. It's the first time in 20 years we've been in this position. So, but yeah, last night's game was was crazy and we were there yeah we're not there we were, we were at a bar watching but yeah yeah we had a great time we've got a good group of guys that likes to get together and watch and you know everyone from the casual fan to the diehard fan were we were all <laughs> high-fiving each other when we won and running around the yeah. bar like maniacs it was a good yeah time. yeah my father-in-law uh looked like he was going to have uh a coronary <laughs> like he got a piece of polish sausage lodged in the lining of his heart because he was not doing well <laughs> Uh, it was so stressed out as it was mm-hmm. tied, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. But, um, so yeah, I referenced it and I think we're going to do a new segment. We have apparel rants as a thing, mm-hmm. but it's the first edition of equipment rants. And yes, we have a bumper. Yeah, well, we can't do that with our printer because it's right. much larger and more expensive. But For those of you not listening or not watching on the YouTube, that was uh, a scene from Office Space where they destroyed <laughs> the printer, and um, it really seems like that would be a heck of a lot of fun to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll make a, uh, I'll go into Adobe Premiere and make a more sophisticated one that has your face tracking with the people and the things. So it looks like you're the one swinging the bat. Um, <laughs> Anyway, a little bit of an ongoing saga with Epson and the 3070s, uh, and today was just another chapter. So, I mean, before we bring on our guest, tell us about it. Tell the listener. I've, I've, I'm here. I've lived it. But tell the listener mm. what exactly has been happening. Well, uh, you know, between you and me, the listener probably doesn't really give a crap, but um, yeah. I'll tell the story anyway. Uh, so we've had, um, you know, we have. We, we bought a 3070 and then what for apparel had a 3070 and we uh, acquired it as well when uh, we acquired their uh, business and customers and everything. We purchased that from them and uh, the warranty transferred to us. And so we've got two 3070s um, and we've had really not very many problems with the first one, the one that we originally bought. The second one, you guys had had problems with it back you know, when it was still what for apparel and had had um, this yeah. particular rep out um, concerning some of the, well, some parts and yeah. some issues that you had with it. And so we got it. And then the same issues happened and the tech that came out would like fix it. And then he'd say, you know, this is going to keep happening because blah, blah, blah. Um, the way that the way the track is going on the, uh, um, 
you know, the printhead, the, uh, what's it called? The carriage. Yeah. That moves back and forth with the printhead is, um, it basically kind of slowly over time just sinks a little bit. And then what happens is, is that the printhead and the suction caps don't line up. And then the suction caps are because of that, they're not being able to be, um, kind of cleaned or, or like stored overnight in a airtight environment to where they won't clog. And so you come back next morning and you have to do a ton of cleanings and it just gets worse and worse until he comes back and raises or lowers that carriage to where it lines up with those caps again. And he says, yeah, this is going to keep happening. Um, this is so what you want to hear from yeah. your reps and rep. <laughs> yeah. And that's just one of the problems. Then the, the other machine um, was giving an error where it would just stop in the middle of a of a print and it probably happened once a day. So you got to throw that garment away. You got to restart the machine. It throws off production. Obviously you lose money on the garment and we're like, okay, just fix this one issue. And so the guy came out, he tried to fix it. Um, he turns off the machine, turns back on the machine and it doesn't turn on. He's like, what the heck? So he found out it was a faulty um, uh, power supply and it actually has two power supplies. And so he replaced both of them. Um, and then he leaves and that printer's working. The other one's do, doing some banding and we're like, Hey, we need, you know, somebody else to come back out and fix the banding. And all banding means is that it just kind of does these light lines through the print sometimes. And it wasn't, it wasn't every single time. It was just sometimes. No. And so, yeah. but we're like, we, you know, paid a lot of money for these, make them work. Um, we have a warranty. So they came back out today. He was here and, Lo and behold, as he was fixing that, he blew the power supplies in that machine. <laughs> no idea. I mean, it's an incredible coincidence. We have zero <laughs> understanding of how this could possibly happen. But he's supposed to come back out tomorrow and um, try to fix the original thing he was going to fix, as well as power do the power supplies. And we'll see if that works. But that is my equipment <clears throat> rant. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a, been a process, and like what is and what isn't covered in the in the warranty, and mm -hmm. you know, yeah, there's more to it. I'm not going to bore you anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta. Yeah. Well, this will bring the people back. We have a special guest, a recurring guest. He hasn't been on in a long time, and I don't know why I'm trying to make you all wait with bated breath when you could just read the title because it's probably there. But for the sake of semantics and theatrics. <laughs> We're going to build up the tension and say that he is back again to join us, uh, a family member of the podcast, as it were, everybody's favorite uncle, maybe Mike is here <laughs> back on the show. And I threw him in the in the video before he was prepared. Was yeah. Uh, oh, thank you, guys. Um, if anybody's listening to this, they've locked me in the embroidery room. Yeah. And I need help. Oh, yeah, we have. They've only given me water and told me that I have to fix these. Oh, man. Mike's oh. machine's not working. Uh, it's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cool thing about this thing. We could just, we were messing with him earlier. We, he would start talking. And I'd say, what'd you say? And then I'd just remove him from the stream, bring him back in, remove him, bring him back in. It's, yeah. yeah, we have the power and he doesn't. Yeah, it's, he uh, was not reading from his cue oh, cards. Oh, how trying, the turntables. So. Oh, how the turntables have turned. I like turntables. So, anyway, what's up, guys? Mike, welcome back to the Gun and Man cast. It has been a while since you've uh, been on. Yeah, it has been. I don't even remember the last time, actually. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, either. so we we, just, we thought we would um, kind of... We're not really going to do an interview because we've interviewed Mike um, and talked to him about it, a bunch of things. We thought we'd have more of a discussion this time and just talk a little bit about... Um, VAs and consulting and um, kind of business operations and, and things of that nature. Um, partially because we um, we just want to kind of get an update on what Mike's been up to and or give the people an update on what Mike's been up to. He's been pretty busy this year um, with some stuff that we'll get into uh, in his own business. And then we, the second thing is that uh, we have an announcement actually uh, for Make Your Mark Design. Um, Amy, who's been my business operations manager for three and a half years now, um, yeah. actually had an opportunity to take another position um, at a college where they uh, give free tuition to their employees. Right. And uh, she's she's wanted to go back to school for a long time. Um, so that was part of her decision. Um, I did, you know, try to try to do my best to keep her. I mean, there's no bad blood or anything. She was actually yeah. pretty upset when she told me that she had made this decision because she 
she wants to always be loyal and, you know, and help others. Um, but sometimes that's at the, you know, detriment yeah. of her, her own well-being. And so this time I even encouraged her. I said, you know, do the thing that's going to make you the most happy. And so she actually put in her two weeks last Friday. So she's got another week left here. Um, and so we actually, after talking to Mike, um, uh, we basically brought him in to kind of be a bridge uh, between yeah. what, um, where we're at now, take as much knowledge transfer from Amy as possible, and then eventually help us kind of um, move forward and, and make a plan moving forward, how we're going to replace the things that Amy's been doing and potentially even um, combine those uh, tasks with some things that other people um, are doing here that could potentially be done by other people uh, in other roles. So um, that's a really long way of saying um, we just wanted to hang out and talk to Mike for a little bit today yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. It's pretty, pretty accurate. But before we get into the conversation, we would be remiss if we did not also Ooh. include Mike in on this week's weekly dad joke time for the weekly dad joke yeah i was totally remiss <laughs> you're remissant <laughs> i was remissant <laughs> all right well uh mike you are you are the the guest here so uh go ahead and give us your dad joke this week i, I thought it was the hostage but uh, okay all right so i got one Let me remove you yeah. <laughs> uh, all right guys uh so why did the scarecrow scarecrow win an award? No ideas. Don't know. Nothing. No idea. No. Nope. He was outstanding in his field. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was actually pretty good. Hmm. I, I I enjoyed that one. Not bad for uh, thirty seconds of research. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not bad at all. We don't, we don't have time to do things like that here. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds right. or it's not happening. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Prom night. Travis. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the other night we were having family dinner and, and, uh, as you, if you're a longtime podcast listener, you know, I have a lot of kids, so we're all eating together and, and my kids, they, they were refusing to eat the leftover tacos, uh, that we were having for dinner. So my wife asked me to throw them out. So I did. And now I have no idea what to do with the tacos. <laughs> That's <Ooh>. awesome. Priority. <laughs> tacos over toddlers or children. I think I want tacos for dinner. <laughs> yeah, not a, not a bad move. Never a bad. I know move. Travis has got them now. <laughs> just no kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kicked all yeah, those just kids. No kids. Out. Come on over. Tacos. Oh, sounds good. There's a seat at the table. Yeah, wow. a lot of kids too. Sweet. There's lots of tacos. <laughs> lots of food to be eaten there. Nice. So, well, here we are, folks. Uh, so, Travis, yeah, let's kind of yeah. um, get into the the nitty gritty here, the conversation. I'll let you kind of lead um, and kind of give give an update. Or Mike, if you want to give a quick update of how you've been, how things have been going in the last year. Yeah, um, I wanted yeah. to actually. I just wanted to. Yeah, I just wanted to say. Um, uh, Mike's been doing a whole really, a bunch of really cool things in his business. And so I, that was one of the reasons we wanted to have him on just to share kind of what, what's been happening. Cause he's really made a huge shift since he sold me the business. And then we had to learn to work together and that took a while just figuring out some of the nitty gritty, but now you've had a lot more time to, to work on the business. I, I actually got to make a quick phone call. So I'm going to let you guys take it from here for a minute. Um, but Mike, why don't you share like what's been going on in your business? Yeah, sure. Um, so late 2020, as you guys probably know, if you listen to the podcast, I sold, uh, Travis, the printing portion of the business and it's the first time I'd ever done anything like that. First time he had acquired a company like that. And pretty much after we got the transition done, I went home and with the staff I had remaining, which was, you know, a couple of us people and a couple of offshore people, we went, well, right. what do we do now? <laughs> So I'd say 2021 was largely us just figuring out how that relationship should work as kind of as Travis alluded to, um, just learning the kind of ins and outs of not 
literally being able to walk down the hall and be like, what happened to this order? You know, now it was right. How do we even communicate? So we set up some communication methods through Microsoft teams. Um, we, you know, started to work on our processes uh, to be able to provide artwork and, you know, the correct format and everything that they needed. Right. Because, you know, up until that point, we hadn't really, taking much look at that, you know, kind of the operators used to do a lot of the artwork manipulation um, straight out of the orders. So this was kind of something sure. different that Travis's operators weren't going to do that. Um, so yeah, we spent about, we, we spent most of 2021 just kind of working on that stuff. And um, we kind of, we came through Q4 again, 2021. Um, and in 2022, we started to look at really the our business as a whole in the sense that, you know, we had uh, a couple of offshore people, right. uh, VAs, as you know them, and, um, you know, a couple of local people that now could work wherever they wanted. They didn't necessarily have to be in an office. So sure. um, we, you know, we kind of started to explore the value of um, VAs because there was a lot of things that still needed to be done. And a lot of those tasks that, you know, our operators used to do now needed to be done by somebody. And, you know, off offshoring and VAs are a pretty cost effective way to, um, you know, get things done. I mean, we can typically, I can hire, you know, three people for the price of maybe one U S person to do things like create the print files and customer service, uh, finance, uh, marketing and all those things. So that's kind of what we've been working on in 2022 with the ultimate goal of kind of just get organized, get more organized, um, and, kind of try to pull me and my existing operations manager out of the the sales and Amazon business to be able to work on other projects that we have going on. Kind of that old mantra that goes back to work on your business instead of in your business. So we've built, um, we've built up to about 13 VAs now from three, which is where I think we were at the beginning of, or the end of 2021. And we're looking to hire three more and I can go into those kind of positions, but the majority of them were uh, working on Amazon listings, growth, flat files. Um, we've hired an ad um, and I tried to do ads for a while on Amazon, which I, I was good at, but I can't do everything. So we ended up hiring an ad guy. Um, we've got an Amazon account manager that's going to start in a few weeks. And I think, uh, the next thing that we're trying to bring on is a project manager, um, which has been a little bit of a difficult hire. Um, they're, everybody thinks they can manage projects, but we're kind of looking for somebody that has <laughs> a background in it. Yeah. Like, I mean, anybody can manage projects, right. But we're looking for somebody that's got that specific background in that, that, um, kind of well mostly we're looking for certifications because it shows us that they can do the documentation and everything so you know i can you know that's that's kind of what we've been up to is and i've been looking at doing some more consulting things which is why i'm sitting in an embroidery room right now in Travis's <laughs> shop so <laughs> yeah well i i, I want to talk a little bit about um some of the like the va thing i think is really interesting and i just want you know get your feedback on it get Josiah's feedback on it. I feel like, um, you know, and probably a lot of our listeners are like we're totally cool outsourcing, you know, maybe some design, you know, if they're like on Merch by Amazon, they're having somebody do some designs for them or whatever, or maybe even, you know, posting their designs for them. Um, but when you get into like some of the um, quote unquote more difficult tasks, I think that's where, you know, you, you start seeing some resistance. I mean, I know I have resistance, you know, when we're, when we start talking about, well, customer service and well, I don't want them to just refund everybody and I'm just losing money or, you know, re resend the product or what, you know, there's gotta be some, I need to be involved in that or, you know, my books, I need to make sure that, you know, when I see a, a charge, I know what it is. No one else might know what it is. So they're going to have to ask me anyway. So why don't I just do it? I mean, there, I think there's a lot of reasons that, um, the resistance comes in and I know it's for me been, um, kind of a reoccurring thing. And I'm, I'm very open to relearning that. Um, and I, and that's one of the reasons that you're here because I've seen the success you've had. And so I want to, uh, trust more, I guess, and, mm -hmm. and lean into that a little bit more, but I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on how you overcame that resistance. Cause I guarantee you had it too, <laughs> at least in some oh, ways. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, it kind of goes back to, you know, when I started my business, I was doing it out of my house and someone was like, why don't you hire somebody? And I was like, I don't trust anybody. I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> no one will ever do it as good as I am. But you know what? I can't do everything. You know, the bigger the company gets, the worse it gets. So, you know, when you had to hire your first employee, it might have been a stranger. It could have been a friend, could have been a family member. So there could have been a level of trust there, but maybe there wasn't. Um, the mental block of, you know, that kind of that trust is just something you've kind of got to work through. Um, I personally kind of looked at it like, okay, I'm insane most of the time. And maybe, maybe if I hire somebody, you know, they're going to do it to 80% of the ability that I did because it's not their business. You know, it's, it's a job for them. They want to make money. They want to go home to their family and they're not going to be more than likely. They're not going to be over invested, but Mm -hmm. Um, that was like the first thing I did to kind of get okay with it. So fast forward to VAs, I kind of had the same fear because these VAs aren't in your office. You know, they they right. they exist as they exist in the ether, really. You know, yeah. they're <laughs> they're virtual. So you know the you know you always think about the worst things. You're like, oh my god, what if this person like destroys my business or you know runs away with all of my ideas or you know whatnot, and then you know, you kind of bring yourself back to earth and you're like, okay, well, what are my options here? Like I can hire someone in the U S to do this and only be able to afford one person instead of three. I can try to do it myself, but whether you realize it or not, a lot of times that does hinder your business because it's true. You need to work on your business instead of in your business. When you get to the point that you can do that, yeah. um, when you've accepted that level of trust, when you've built good processes and SOPs and maybe you haven't, then, you know, that's kind of where you start. And that's what we had to do with VAs um, because it wasn't like we could just bring them in and be like, Hey, come here. Okay. Let me show you this thing. No, mm -hmm. they're not here. You have to figure out how to communicate with them. Um, the good news is most VAs that you would pick up offshore um, have worked remotely. So they're familiar with things. And sometimes you can actually like ask them, like, how do you, you know, what's the best way for me to like, show like i would this mm. is typically an interview question is like how do you learn like right. do you like watching videos would you rather have like an 80 page sure. document with screenshots you know like what do you do and then you just kind of work off that mm -hmm. so kind of the you know there's a lot of things you can do with vas um we've kind of pushed the envelope on that and maybe hired for things and then you and i were talking about this i think yesterday travis i've actually hired an hr person that's in the philippines Mm -hmm. that handles my us and uh, well we're in four countries five countries right now so we've got the us we've got ukraine we've got gibraltar we've got the philippines and we've got indonesia so i have people in five countries mm -hmm. um and so my hr person's job was to start looking at what the you know work life was like for each of those countries to make sure that you know what we were offering them was reasonable um just for what it's worth, every country has different holidays. So not everybody celebrates the Independence Day, July 4th here. You know, they have their <laughs> right. own. Indonesia, mm -hmm. I think, actually has like 30 holidays or something like that. Well, um, they wow. have an insane amount of days off in that country. But the labor is actually like cheaper there than the Philippines. And wow. it's, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's you, you kind of balance, you know, what you want. Um so yeah, we hired HR, um, our, my HR girl, like worked on all of our policies, us based and everywhere else. Um, she's mainly based in the Philippines and that's where like most of our VAs are. So she's done a whole bunch of stuff like, um, balance out time off. Um, you know, we're looking into offering, uh, benefits in the Philippines. So I don't have a physical presence there, but huh. you can off offer subsidies and the way that you can actually create a better value for the VAs in the Philippines if you offer healthcare because it's very, very important to, or a healthcare subsidy because it's mm -hmm. very important to them. So they may actually take less pay if you offer healthcare, but the way that it kind of works out is healthcare is actually cheaper than the amount of pay you would pay them in 12 or if you offer the 13th month pay, which yeah. is mm -hmm. the bonus mm -hmm. that people in the Philippines get. Right. Um, so it works out being a better value in the long run and your employees are more invested there. You know, the retention is better. Um, we've never actually had a VA quit. So I guess we've mm -hmm. been kind of probably doing it right for a while. Um, but yeah, it's a, you know, it's a learning curve that you definitely have to um, have good, um, 
basically good processes. You, you know, like you can record videos for things, you can write SOPs mm-hmm. for them, and typically mm-hmm. they they get along. If it's something, one thing that we've been doing is hiring things for things that we don't know. Like I'm not very good at HR. I'll be honest, I I suck at it. Yeah. And I hate I hate it. I, I mean, I'm a tech <laughs> guy in the, in the interim, so the last thing I want to do is people the people thing. Um, you know. But it's important to other employees that, you know, they're treated fairly. They understand what the job is. They understand what's expected of them mm-hmm. and that they're, you know, fairly compensated. And, and even the compensation thing, um, you know, if, if you treat people fairly, you know, wherever they are and you're open to, you know, cultural differences, but, you know, you right. can get a lot of work done. And I mean, everybody kind of has a specialty. Our VAs in the Philippines are really great tech people, really great with numbers. Um and like I said, most of them have done this remote thing before. So when I'm stuck, I, I'll ask one of them. I was like, hey, do you? how do you think we can do this thing? Or, hey, what does it look like for, you know, this other candidate is asking me for X, Y, Z. What do you think of that? Yeah. So we kind of use them yeah. as a resource too. So. Talk a little bit about um, how you guys uh, communicate and, you know, what's that like on a daily basis? I mean, is it, is it, um, are you guys kind of, all in different category categories or, you know, in your yeah. Slack or in your teams or whatever, or your Google, whatever. Um, or are you, do you have like one that's for everybody and kind of, we've a, got, a whatever? Yeah, we've, we've kind of got both. We use Slack to communicate mostly. We use loom if we want to record a video message to them or, or something along mm-hmm. those lines or like show them how to do something. Hmm. Um, it's typically broken up like an org chart would be. So we have a department called growth and that apart, that department covers all of Amazon e-commerce sales, advertising and new product launches. Mm-hmm. Um, and that team we've, we have a, a product manager in the Philippines that manages like seven people in the, also in the Philippines under that. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that's really important for VAs is to build in a meeting structure. So if your organization is large enough or your group, like growth is large enough, you make sure that they have team meetings so that they can discuss things amongst amongst themselves. Um, one-on-ones become largely important with VAs so that you can check in once a week. The manager can technically check in once a week with um, the employee to make sure they're doing you know what they need mm-hmm. to do um, and making sure that they're meeting their KPIs. And uh, you know we 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 haven't done it recently, but we're setting up a town hall so that everybody can come together in one <laughs> kind of meeting and ask or get, you know, updates on the company. Like, Hey, where's Mike? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's in Colorado for two weeks. You know, he's, he's helping out over there. Um, right. you know, like typically I wouldn't necessarily send an email out and maybe, you know, some VA that's doing my video ads in Indonesia is not going to be looking at my calendar. So it's like, Oh, okay. The, right. you know, he's, he's gone. What's going on. You know, awareness is like a big thing. Right. They want to know what's going on in the company. <laughs> They typically are, um, you know, they're very, the Philippines, they're very, um, what's, what's the word? They're, they're really interested in your company. They, they want you to succeed. They want to be successful. They want you to appreciate them. They want to do the things that they need to do. So you do appreciate them. So they're a hardworking, it's a hardworking country. Um, yeah. And they, they do want check-ins. I mean, we've, you know, we made the mistake for a while on our early VAs not really checking in and they were just kind of on a lonely island by themselves. But Yeah, siloed. Yeah, yeah siloed. Um, in fact, that's what HR kind of came in and did is they started to send out surveys. Like, how do you like working at the company? What do you not like? You know, kind of like, how was your experience onboarding when you came on? Things like that. So we could get feedback so that we knew how to improve the process because maybe, you know, we weren't, really clear on something or maybe they got siloed and nobody talked to them for like six months and they were just sitting there like churning out video ads or something so wow you mentioned earlier kpis what is is that like a a goals that you have set for them and that they're meeting or what is that key performance indicators it's kind of along the lines of like okay if their normal job is to churn out video ads every day how many do they how many are they expected to turn out sure right so our girl she's doing eight a day so typically one an hour putting video ads together adding music doing that stuff um our you know ads guy might have a kpi that says you know within the first three months of you specifically working on this account we need you to get the advertising costs Mm -hmm. down and sales up by 10% or something along those lines. Right. So, so it's not just necessarily a quota. It could also be, 
you know, a goal that that data will kind of give you the outcome. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. It, I mean, the KPI is more of like it might be more of a quota. We also it have could, performance. Yeah, it goals. can be a quota. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we also have performance it's goals, and then both. we have creative goals too. Like you know, um, maybe we want our ad girl to start making Amazon posts. You know, so it's like okay, your Q two goal this year is to research uh, good posts, and then by the end of the quarter, make ten that you know get five hundred views or something right. along those lines. So it could be a quota, and it could be you know, there's things you can't really quota. HR is hard to quota. How do you quota HR? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, let's uh, let's jump into like kind of some of the things. Um, now, now you you've basically come. I, I shared this a little bit a while ago. You've come to kind of be a bridge, and he's got a, a week, another week. You came here, a week and a day, I guess. You came here yesterday, so you spent yesterday, today, you'll spend tomorrow, and then all next week with her. And then you even got together with Josiah today. Um, you know, for some of his stuff, I'm sure you're going to have one on ones with all of our team members to kind of see different things. Um, what are your goals? I know we've talked a lot about it. You've asked me what my goals are and we can, you know, if those come up, we can talk about those, but what are your goals in coming into a company um, and helping them potentially get some, uh, you know, some offshore help or, you know, in a transitional time, what, like when you come in to make your mark design, you see it's in a transition what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. I mean, the first thing is like kind of the panic of losing somebody. I mean, two weeks is a really short period of time to offload knowledge, especially for someone that's been here as long as Amy. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I come in and I kind of like, okay, you know, it's going to be okay. And then like my goal really is to understand what like Amy does, um, understand how it relates to what the rest of the company is doing, right. understand, um, you know, what those tasks are and um, really just start to dive into them. I'm kind of more of a, uh, definitely a, a planner. So mm -hmm. I'm working on putting together the, a list of tasks that she's currently doing. And then I'm going to distinguish which ones like literally can't be done remotely and which ones can be offshore. So it's kind of like a transitory position between coming in, learning what the person does, temporarily mm -hmm. doing that work. So I've got, you know, my, some of my VAs have time that they can take over some of her tasks. Um, and then ultimately offshoring it to VAs to save money in the long run so that you guys can do other things if you need mm -hmm. with that. Um, and really it's just kind of like getting everything organized and, and figuring out where it fits in. Um, kind of the, the processes that I'm looking at for Amy some of them she has documented SOPs, some some she doesn't. So if she doesn't, mm -hmm. what my goal is to write up an SOP so that if I offshore that particular task to say uh, an executive assistant in the Philippines, that person can do that task. Like let's just say simple one is like payroll, right? Like if you need somebody in the Philippines mm -hmm. to run like payroll, this is the system that you know, you've know you set up, Travis, this is how it's done. This is how Amy was doing it. And then I'm gonna be able to write that SOP, hand it off to that, VA once hired in the Philippines and check that mm -hmm. off the list. Okay. That's taken care of in the interim. I'll do it or someone from my staff will do it until we find that right fit for that and figure out who that person is. Yeah. It could be the bookkeeper. It could be an executive assistant. It could be, you know, uh, uh, you know, there's a couple different positions that actually could pick that up and do it, but that's just an example. Yeah. Right. So how long was the list and were you surprised by the length? I'm not actually, <laughs> Honest, I'll be honest with you, Travis. Um, Amy is pretty amazing, and I'm yeah, sorry you're losing her because she really. Yeah. I didn't know. I, I I worked with you a lot, and I I you know I think this is probably a good thing. I didn't know what Amy did because it was smooth enough that I didn't need to know. So um, she was pretty organized. I I don't necessarily think this is going to be. Uh, super challenging. I think that we're going to be able to take over the task. Some of this, you know, there's a cheat code. It's like I, I ran basically a business just like this. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know what I know what the typical tasks are. I know what right. onboarding should look like and does. I, you know, I know, um, you know, there's things that pop up in the production environment that need to be handled. Mm -hmm. um, so, but no, honestly, I, I, I don't think it's that bad. I think that the biggest challenge will be to 
I think the biggest challenge is really going to be for you to be okay with what goes offshore and what needs to be done here. So you hire maybe mm. one, one, you know, part-time person to do some of this, or we try to offshore a lot of it. And maybe somebody like you picks up the, you know, whatever's left, like onboarding is just typically handing people paper and make sure they fill it out and then give it back. You know, that has right. to be done in person, but mm -hmm. a VA in the Philippines could really like put all those documents together and, you know, if you had your system set up right, they could literally print from the Philippines and they'd just be like, it's in your printer, Travis. All you have to do is hand it to the guy that comes <laughs> through the door and then, you know, and then they'll follow up and be like, did they sign everything? You know, and then, hey, scan this right. back, you know, and then it's done. So, send it by um, and, yeah, everybody's afraid of technology. But I mean, honestly, you can do some amazing things like outside the office that people don't need to be here. It's just a lot of it is getting over that fear mm -hmm. of what's this going to look like? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then the other side of that, I think too, is um, personally is uh, maintaining kind of a, a local first presence in the community. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I don't want to like, yeah. obviously you can't outsource your production, <laughs> right? You know, well, you can, I did, here. but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Well, yeah, that's called drop shipping. <laughs> so I suppose you can. But yep. but I mean, you know, for us, we're not, you know, that's one thing that we have to have people here to do. Yep. Um, you know, and I don't want to have so few people that aren't doing production that if somebody comes to the door, you know, it feels very, you know, there, there has to be some somebody there that at all times ready to kind of helping somebody answer the phone, you know, talk to a client, all of those things. Um you know, you want to make maintain kind of a. Um, you are an important part of our business. Absolutely. Um, you know, face facing your yeah. your local clients, yeah. and so you don't want to. I don't know that I want to necessarily outsource everything to where it's just me and a bunch of production people. You know, yeah. for you know, then I can never take a vacation. Then I can, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. But to your point, I think there are a lot of things that we probably do um, that we could outsource. One of them, and and not just Amy's job or not just the things that Amy's doing, but some of the things that maybe some of the other people in our organization are doing and restructuring some of that to where some of their time is set free. Um, so they're not so stressed out, you know, and, and going and, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of Tate. You know, yeah. primarily he's always running around here with the, like the chicken with his head cut off. Um, and so hopefully we're one of the things we're trying to do or looking at doing is potentially creating a system to where ordering um, all of the blanks and all of the, the you know, all the things that we yeah. buy to resell. Um, if that could happen, I think that would be a game changer for him, save him, you know, the stress of knowing that he always has to order. That's, you know, I got to get this order and I got to get this order in. But then also just the actual time savings um, right, right. is a real thing, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's several other people that we're going to talk to within your organization that, you know, about things like that, like ordering is a big stress point. Um, the idea here is, you know, we're going to let's say that you didn't use offshore. You had no offshore and maybe you had to hire a bookkeeper to sit here, a salesperson Um uh, you know, uh, what else am I missing? Uh, HR. So that's three U S people, you know, a reasonable salary. Let's just say it's 50 K a year. That's $150,000 that you would pay for three people. Yeah. The average salary in the Philippines for those positions would be about $12,000 a year. So $36,000, yeah. you could have those three people. Now, what could you do with that extra money? You could hire help in the shop, maybe more production people, mm -hmm. um, right. more sales people, Hawaii. Maybe. Yeah, you could go to Hawaii. I mean, you can offshore all of your tasks. <laughs> you can offshore all of your tasks, which is kind of what I did. I, I I mostly offshored myself out of a job, to tell you the truth. But it's great <laughs> because now I can go out and do other things. Or if I really wanted to work on projects within my Amazon or my you know printing business, I could. Or if I want to start another company, I have the time now. And that's the idea is you free up those resources, uh, you know, monetarily, your cash flow. Because you can, then you can hire and do whatever you want. Almost, it's, sometimes it's a little scary. Like, what am I going to do with right. this extra money? And you almost have to stop yourself from going and buying like some crazy piece of equipment that maybe you don't really need, but you're going to because you have money. No, you still have to be reasonable with it. But that's yeah. the idea is like you, you build time out for people like Tate so that Tate can do 
the things that he's not able to do right now. There's quite right. a few of those things in every office and in, in business around the country that, you know, there's always things that people aren't getting to. And maybe it's costing you money in the long run, you know, like maybe not having mm-hmm. three salespeople is costing you money. But right now you can't afford it because you have a bookkeeper, right. HR and mm-hmm. a marketing person on staff and they're all U.S. based and they're costing a ton of money. So that's the idea is you you offshore to free up time. Uh, you offshore to um, create space for like Tate to really on it. It sounds funny, but you need to create space for your employees to think sometimes too. Mm. If they're yeah. running 110%, chances are they don't really have time to think through a lot of things. And that's where kind of mistakes can sometimes get made or, you know, maybe opportunities are missed um, because they didn't have time to like, you know, try to test print on that one item or, you know, maybe they made a mistake and misordered something because they were just so (laughs) overwhelmed trying to do it fast. So um, there's a lot of benefits to kind of doing that, this kind of thing, the offshore thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, you mentioned a little, I think Travis might've mentioned, you mentioned at the beginning, you're doing some, well, what you're doing here is in a, in a consulting capacity. So is this something that you are offering outside of, this particular um, instance? Is this kind of the proof of concept for you? Is it something that you're going to want to offer down the road? Because we've had people ask us a lot in the Facebook group or an I, there was an iTunes review last week, which we'll have to, we'll, we have another one that we'll shout out at the end of this episode. But a lot of people are asking, like, do you guys do consulting? Do you know anyone that does consulting? So is that something that now that you have the time to, you might kind of pivot and offer yeah. more broad that's kind of how this came up is like, I I like helping people. So it was like, I, I offshored myself out of a job in my own business, but the Mm -hmm. benefit was that I could build and look at building, building this other consulting type thing. And I already have a lot of resources in my business that maybe aren't working a hundred percent capacity. So the transitionary temp, just call it the temp period is something that I could offer too. And then eventually offshoring. So yeah, if people, if anybody, you know, if any of the listeners are looking for someone to come into their business, kind of take a look at their processes, figure out, you know, maybe the ways that can be improved in the office or out of the office or offshore. Yeah. It's definitely something that kind of looking at Travis. I told Travis this when I started, I was like, you're kind of my test bed, you know, but it's kind of familiar too. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. Like, you know, I know you, like I was thinking about that today as I was working with Amy, I was like, this, you know, like when you're sitting there with a brand new employee, that's like really overwhelmed and then just got hired and it's like, didn't really know what was going on. It's, it's like, you wonder how much knowledge they're actually retaining. And I was sitting there thinking like, Oh, I got this, I got this, I got this. Um, but it's because I'm, you know, I've kind of been in each of those kind of, um, seats before. So that's kind of a really like a unique perspective. So this has been comfortable, but I I know that, you know, for, uh, others, you know, it, it might seem a little daunting, but that's the part. That's the point of hiring a consultant is that person can come in, has that background knowledge, has that experience, sometimes even mm-hmm. has an outside perspective. You know, yeah. like I, I can come in and be like, you know, that's a little strange to do it that way. Have you considered doing it maybe this way? Or <clears throat> like I told you, Travis, like I'm your consultant. If you want to hear my opinion or if you want to me to make suggestions, I will. If you literally just want me to pick up the task exactly as Amy did it and do right. it and then hand it mm-hmm. off exactly the same way i can do that too yeah. well yeah we just i just want you to shut up and do your job yeah um, exactly <laughs> <laughs> you really just want you know, like you want it to be done and, yeah <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> i was you guys i was gonna, gonna say the, you guys are gonna unlock the door after this right i'm not well, maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll see we'll see what happens um i was gonna say though that even if somebody wants to um you know hire you as a consultant they're gonna have to freaking wait their damn turn um, because you're with me for two to three months (laughs) yeah i mean i i do have a counterpart that could potentially do it if necessary (laughs) well i think that's you brought up a good point though in, in in terms of consulting and inviting fresh eyes to a situation because i think when you're in the thick of it, you don't have the opportunity to kind of rethink systems because you're, like you said, when you're running a hundred miles an hour, you don't have time to think through a lot of things. And a lot of that might be systems that were put in place in the beginning and you haven't had time to reevaluate them and they're not actually exactly. working for you. You just don't right. want the, the, in your mind, the, the idea of refining the process is worse than just dealing with a broken one. But in yeah. actuality, mm-hmm. taking the time to fix it 
can actually streamline and make uh, things a lot more efficient. So welcoming in, just know when you, you're listening, when you welcome in a consultant, you do have to make room for that correction or those ideas that might go against what you have established. But yeah, it's totally. because the end game is to improve efficiency. And so it'll right. be a little bit of a growing pain process and kind of a stretching process. But mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, that's, that's what is needed is outside perspectives yeah and, and you know like when something doesn't go wrong you don't realize mm -hmm. what's not missing you know like in terms <clears throat> right. of money lost right like you may not even realize you're mm -hmm. losing money or you're missing out on an opportunity because you're just like i'm just going to deal with this thing and maybe you don't realize how much time it's actually costing you um, yeah 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 i think um i was going to shout out fiona in the facebook group um asked based on our conversation last week about like organizing your design files and using SKUs and DIDs and all that stuff. Um, she, she just asked a question. She's like, this is how I do it. I don't know if I need to change. I don't know. And, and we had a big long um, discussion in there and Chris um, Pupke came in there and just left a huge, huge response. And he's, He's done, you know, he basically went through the growing pains of changing from doing it one way to another. Just like we talked about last week, how I started with, you know, Amazon's kind of skews that they just give you. And I couldn't, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, if somebody asked for this particular mug, I'd have to go find it somewhere or this design until we came into a place where we went through the growing pains to re to establish a system that works for us. And so that's kind of what we're trying to do now i think um obviously right now at the beginning it's very important for the knowledge transfer piece to happen and to understand what actually is going on okay. and as those things come mike i'm assuming you're like going oh i have a better idea for this or i have maybe thoughts on this or a way that we could tweak this to make it a little more efficient and then after you know amy's actually gone and we're doing the work that's when we'll jump in to kind of uh, some of the improvements that I think you'll have suggestions for. Am I, am I correct in that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's already happened. Something she showed me yesterday, I was practicing today and I was like, I think I can do this a little faster maybe. And it might've just been, you know, she didn't have time to kind of work through that, but right. that's kind of the nice thing about doing the, you know, the kind of the knowledge transfer into the temp work is like, I'm actually doing the task and it's kind of just a new perspective on the you know the way it's yeah, working it's i can yeah. i can improve it and then i can hand it off so it's even more efficient by the time it gets to whoever's going to do this task in the long run yeah i mean there's there's no shame in asking for you know help along the lines of anything i mean you you reference the facebook group that's a that that's a good way to get help consulting if you can you know if you have the means to do that um i i mean i'm consulting with you but i brought in my own consultants too um i've you know just recently finished uh, up something called EOS, which is like a, I won't go into it, but it's, it's basically a whole structure for um, a company to build, to make sure that, uh, you know, personnel are in the right seat, that you've mm -hmm. got the right person doing the job. Um, one of the big things in it is, do they get it? Do they want it? And can they, are they capable of it? And you do that by a per person basis. And then there's a whole like meeting structure too that, makes all of your meetings more efficient but long long story short is like even i go out and ask for help i mean i go out right. into the facebook groups i and when i can mm -hmm. give back in the facebook groups i i do um and yeah, yeah sometimes it's just like at you know if you've got a problem ask for help if you really think you need help you can bring in like a consultant <clears throat> yeah we're in a facebook chat with a bunch of um a bunch of people that i've gotten a lot of help from i mean and sometimes it's just you know, sometimes those chats can be a little bit distracting because, you know, yeah. they're just full of memes and, you know, <laughs> popping jokes and all that. But sometimes yeah. when you have an actual question and somebody uh, has already gone through that, those those groups and chats and messengers or mess messenger chats can really be uh, beneficial. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I totally they, agree. A nugget can come out of there that changes your whole business. I mean, I've gone yeah. to a trade show and caught something that added 500k that year in sales to my business it's like you never know where they're going to come from they don't necessarily have to come from in here you know as a business owner yeah. like you might be able to get an idea from somebody else and a lot of right. people are willing to like share things and and be open i mean you've got your you know there's always a chance that somebody's kind of closed up and closed box but I, I i largely think that those people are missing out on a lot of stuff right. you know I agree 
giving out and not getting back either way it's like you know it's it's very valuable to be in a consortium of a ton of people that can help you with things like that Mm -hmm. totally i mean yeah it's it's kind of um it's really some of those facebook groups and you know again our facebook group it's kind of free consulting, you know, if yeah, you can't afford basically. Mike, yeah. ask yeah. Mike a question. <laughs> in tag him in the group and he'll probably yeah, exactly. answer for free. And then he'll be forced <laughs> to answer. <laughs> yeah, no, I will. I, yeah. yeah, I will. And <laughs> I mean, my, my print on demand knowledge and business knowledge goes back to like 2006. So I hope you got a minute. <laughs> if you do ask me yeah. something, it's probably going to be a response about that long. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Or I'll just yeah. be like, be, I don't know, but I'll get back to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's just different levels. You know, I yeah. mean, we obviously had a need and had, um, you know, the finances to make it work to where we could hire him and have him be on site for a season um, while we moved through this transition. And it was, yeah. you know, quite frankly, I don't know that I would have been able to get somebody in to, um, in those two weeks, like you said at the beginning of the podcast, right? You know, it's like, uh, crap. What's gonna happen when she's gone? Uh, oh boy, yeah, we need to get I, a job ab up right now. And yeah, and, and and then I just started talking to Mike, and I was like, well, what if we had a bridge? You know? Well, I and, offered um, too. Like, I don't even yeah. think when you, you were just I wasn't venting. I thought you were joking. You yeah, and I was like, you know what? I'm. I you know I offered. I'm like, well, if you need help, let me know. And I started thinking. I was like. I don't really have a lot to do and I've really been thinking about like, <laughs> ha- hanging a shingle, you know, to do this yeah, consulting yeah. thing or even, you know, any, anything along those lines. And I was like, I'm actually serious, Travis. If you, if you want my help, I could literally be there as soon as Monday, which would be, you know, in Amy's case, it would have been the first day of her two last two weeks. So yeah. It, it, yeah. it didn't work out like that, but it probably, you know, I got here Wednesday or I got here Wednesday mm-hmm. morning and that worked out right. good because Amy had some time to kind of, put some stuff together, you know, gather her thoughts, which like I said earlier, that's really important in any, anything that you guys work on. It's like, make sure your employees have enough space to put their thoughts together and think because they might just think you up an idea that makes you a ton of money, or they might just think up, you know, the 95 things that they need to give to you instead of them just working the two weeks and then all that knowledge walking out the door. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Well, Mike, thanks for, uh, you know, not only, obviously taking the time to to be the bridge over troubled waters uh it's not really time it's not trouble i don't think no it's not it's just it's what's the i mean what's the other word there's like you know like i don't know level level three (coughs) rapids how about that lightly lightly turbulent (laughs) but you know what the raft the raft is decent we've all got helmets on and everybody's got a paddle so like it's not a horrible thing at yeah. this point, it's just trying to keep everybody rowing in the same direction yeah. and then making not, sure that nobody drops a paddle. So, we're not, you know, we're not that, white that's... water rafting by any means. <laughs> it's 2022, so just white water is not an acceptable term. <laughs> but we're going <laughs> to we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, Mike, thanks for, again, thanks for coming on the show and kind of giving us an update. And again, if you guys are interested, those listening, in consultation and you have three months to wait so, so travis doesn't uh, kill you <laughs> um and you want to contact mike uh, and get more information you you can contact him through the facebook group uh, yep. but again if you have a quick question or a small question or whatever whatever question you have you can also um just tag him in the group that's printed mancast.com slash facebook is where you can find mm-hmm. all of those things and as always uh wherever there are podcasts the pod cast is there for you and we have a five-star review to shout out uh, because we shamelessly solicited all of these <laughs> five-star reviews uh, for weeks, and we had a couple come in. So we talked. We did one last week, and we are going to show this one this week on the Apple Podcast app, which will always be uh, iTunes, as, as far as I'm concerned. But it is from Tara Don. She left it on May 31st, 2022. It's titled "Indeed, It's Tubular." <laughs> I found you guys this week and I can't stop binging. This is one of my one of the few places I can go now to get non-regurgitated information. You guys dive into the tiny topics instead of instead of staying broad. Thanks so much for all your hard fun. So, I, I don't really know. <laughs> um hard fun, <clears throat> I don't hard work fun. Yes. I understand what she was saying. It's just, all of the above. All yes. of it. 
Yes. Um, so thank you so much, Teradon. And if you guys would like to be shouted out, uh, leave a five star review and a comment. We, we, we would be happy to read it here on air. You can also review us on the Spotify app. You can't leave a comment yet, but you can just at the top of the feed, hit the star and give us a star rating there as well. Our other social media feeds, printondemandcast.com slash Instagram and printondemandcast.com slash YouTube is where you can go to get the video versions of these episodes. But if you don't want to wait for the video version, you can just go to Spotify. If you don't want to go to YouTube, if you want to listen on the go and have a video option, Spotify would be where you would go for that as well. Um, but other than that, Travis, am I missing anything? I always think that I am just missing more of the diatribe every time I think no, uh, You know, the only thing I'd say is, you know, Check out printondemandcast.com slash shop. Um, got yeah. some funny, funny t-shirts and stuff there. We should probably put a, some more stuff. We should we should do a few more things, but you know, that would we require should. work. So we probably won't. <laughs> Unless it gets outsourced, and that's why Mike is here. So yep. eventually <laughs> uh, it'll be a more robust offering. But what kind of print on demand show would we be if we didn't have a print on demand <laughs> merch store for you guys to purchase <laughs> things from? So Correct. Avail yourself of that as well. Again, print on a mancast.com slash shop. So until next week, when we resume our POD 101 uh, series of episodes for Mike, for Travis, I'm Josiah. We'll see you next time right here on the print on demand cast. See you guys. See ya. Bye. Hey, babe. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. We hope you enjoyed the Totally Tubular show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure.